Hi guys, so it's been a while and um, I've been doing some research on cabbage rolls. I've been wanting to make them for a while and then my Uncle Don was saying that it was his favorite food. So I was thinking next time he was up I'd like to make some. Um, but I've never made them because, I don't know, my family is not really into cabbage rolls. <laughs> and I didn't grow up on cabbage rolls. So I looked over about 20 different recipes and I trying to find like vegetarian, vegan, paleo, kind of what I would want to put in there. And I've determined a recipe that I want to try, a la Cooking with K. And so here we go. So this is going to be a little bit Mediterranean-like and, and last night I, um, I had actually brown rice pasta. I don't know even the last time that I had brown rice pasta. It might have been two years ago. I try to only have greens about once a week. And so um, we're not using rice in our cabbage rolls. What we are going to be using is, it's couscous, but it's actually made with uh, cassava. And I'm going to try it out and see how it works. I was going to use some jacama rice. Other people have used cauliflower rice. Um, other people actually have used um, soaked buckwheat, what, buckwheat groats, <laughs> and ground them into like a rice texture. But for this recipe, we're gonna try the cassava couscous, and then we'll see how it goes, and if not, another day we'll try something different. And so this is like so easy to make. I don't know if you've ever tried it before, but this is the grains. Again, here I am spilling. That is my signature to spill everywhere as I'm showing you. And <laughs> we're just gonna put it in. I'm using a half a cup of the couscous, and I got a half a cup of just like hot water, but not really hot, it's just from the tap. And we're gonna put it in, and you can just fluff it a little bit if you want with a food spoon or fork. It has to be equal in amount of water to couscous, and we're literally just gonna put it off to the side, and we're gonna let it absorb the water. And you can put it on a low heat if you want to, if it's not absorbing well, although it's, we're gonna be a while, so it should be fine. The next thing that we've done is we put our cabbage on the stove and um, put it in water just enough to cover the, um, the cabbage and with the, the head down. And it doesn't take very long before the cabbage leaves to get soft, so you want to keep an eye on that because you don't want them to go really, really soggy. Um, but we definitely want them soft enough that we can roll them very well. Next, what we are going to do is make room on my, on my little stage here. And I have my frying pan, again, my nice and deep one. And Uncle Don, when I'm making these for you, I will not use cilantro. But I do prefer cilantro to parsley many times. And so we're going to use cilantro in this recipe. About a tablespoon, and you can see I'm just going to cut it with my scissors. And I'm going to be a little bit generous because as I've said before, lots of greens for alkalizing your system is really important. The other thing with a lot of these recipes, and what I found many times before, is that um, I was eating a lot of acidic foods and I didn't know it and when I started to do my research on what actually was an acidic food or alkalizing food, um, I really had to challenge myself to balance every meal with um, alkalizing foods. So if you can do your research on that, um, if you are having digestive problems or stomach pains or um, indigestion or anything like that, definitely check it out and make sure every meal is um, balanced. Okay, so now we have our paprika, and we're gonna do a tablespoon of paprika. I'm just making sure of my recipe here. Oh, sorry, we're gonna do a teaspoon. I thought that was a lot of paprika. So we're gonna do a half a tablespoon, which is approximately a teaspoon. And we are going to do some red wine vinegar on my land. Oh, I've already opened it, there we go. <laughs> red wine vinegar, there you go. Don't give me trouble for using these different brands. You don't have to use the brand I use. <laughs> use whatever brand you like. Um, sometimes I have favorites, sometimes I just pick the cheapest one. So we're gonna do a tablespoon of red wine vinegar. And then we're gonna go two tablespoons of olive oil. This like olive oil thing is so inconvenient. It is so heavy. So manufacturers like hear me. <laughs> if you could make something that actually like has a handle or something at the bottom. I like to buy in bulk, but really I'm not that strong. <laughs> okay, so for garlic, we're going to do um sorry, a half a tablespoon of garlic. You can put as much garlic really as you want, but garlic for me um, promotes inflammation. So and a lot of times, um, I didn't know that growing up as an Italian, so 
just, you know, go with whatever you like. I'm going to do one teaspoon of garlic. And because you know me, I like things with a little bit of spiciness. I'm not using the chili pepper today, but I am going to use black pepper. And you can see I'm totally running out. And I'm going to just do like a dash, not even a, a pinch, more than a pinch, a couple of pinches, a dash. <laughs> and I don't have my Himalayan salt today. I actually got a different salt. It's supposed to be like real salt, all natural sea salt. I don't know. It's not as good as the Himalayan salt, but it's all my grocery store had and I was kind of in a rush. So there we go. Literally like a pinch. I'm putting it with my hand, but it's literally a pinch. And so that's your first stage and we're just going to kind of smush it all around in our frying pan. We're not on the stove. We're just on our little counter here and we just want it to marinate. So we're just getting kind of all the spices in there. All right, and next we are going to put this off to the side and we are going to do our filling, everything except for our couscous. We have it all measured out here for you and I've already kind of minced it up into little bite-sized pieces. My food processor is broken, so I had to actually use my chopper. So probably if I had my food processor, I would put it in there um, just to get a little bit more fine. I'm not really good at um, making fine cuts with my knives yet. But little bite-sized pieces. This is a third of a cup of celery. And here's our nice big bowl. I actually did like heaping cups. Um, I'm not super accurate with my measurements. They're usually kind of like heaping. Um, I sometimes I'll say a little bit less. Only because I only measure on the videos for your purposes. Other times I'm kind of eyeing it and kind of balancing out the colors and um, the different vegetables that I want a stronger taste for. The red onion, you know I use red onion like all the time. Um, but again, you can use whatever onion you like. And that is a third of a cup also. The mushrooms, a lot of people use the mushrooms as like a meat substitute. And so um, we are put uh, two thirds of mushrooms in. And they also call for, I don't know how to say it, cremini mushrooms, but I'm allergic to those. And so I use white mushrooms. Also the oyster mushrooms are like fabulous if you like mushrooms. And intriguingly enough, we are going to use olives. Now these are not like special olives or anything. These are like just normally, normal jumbo stuffed um, olives. But if you have a favorite olive, definitely mix it up and use your favorite olives. And we have a third of a cup of our olives. And then, of course, we have our spinach. You can use any greens that you want, um, Swiss chard or kale. Um, for me today, it was just really easy to use spinach. And so I just grabbed some spinach, a third of a cup, and we're gonna put that in. And again, you know me, I like to use my hands. And we're just gonna look at that and look how beautiful that is. Some people use zucchini. Um, I've been eating a lot of zucchini in my pakoras and other things because they've been in season. So I really didn't want to do the zucchini thing. But do your research and see what vegetables you like. The other thing that um, we are putting in this that you don't have to put in is lentils. A half a cup of dry lentils, and then it usually doubles in your beans, is a cup. So it makes it not paleo because we're using beans. So if you do want it to be paleo, don't use your beans. And they are soaking right now. You don't have to soak your beans. It just takes longer to cook if you don't soak them. And so I've been trying to practice putting my beans in while I'm doing all the other vegetables, and then I can put them in. So our couscous, once it's absorbed all the water, and our lentils, once they're nice and cooked, not mushy, we're gonna put it in with our wonderful vegetable mix. And then we are going to take um, our cabbage and we're going to take one leaf at a time and put it on our board. And we're going to put approximately a quarter of a cup of our filling in. So when we get to that stage, I will show you how it works. I just wanted to give you a little bit of a heads up for your tomato sauce. You can make tomato sauce on your own. For me today, I'm being really lazy and I've just got an organic sauce that we're going to put over um, like a lasagna. I don't know about other people, but I really want to put Parmesan cheese or a type of cheese on top again, like a lasagna. I think I've been programmed in my Italian heritage, but certainly you don't have to do that. I'll let you know how it goes, and we'll start again in a few minutes. So one last step before we are able to put everything in our wonderful bowl and stuff our cabbage is we want to pre-cook uh, this a little bit. So remember we put um, our marinated 
um, cilantro and paprika and garlic and red wine vinegar in our frying pan. So now we're putting it actually on the stove on our burner and we're going to put all of our wonderful vegetables that we made, there it is there, and we're going to put it in the frying pan with our marinated spices. And our cabbage actually is done. I've taken it off the burner and I've put it off to the side and I've left it in the water um, just to keep warm. And I'm just going to toss the vegetables in the frying pan around for a couple of minutes. And remember everything, like the couscous is cooked, your beans are going to be cooked otherwise. Um, we're going to strain them once they're done. Um, it'll be about a, a cup of cooked lentils. And again, you can put it in a food processor to make it a little bit more granular if you want. Or I will be putting in the full lentil in this today. And we're just going to give it a couple of seconds in the frying pan, making sure that all of our spices are around. You can give it a little bit of a taste test, see if you need anything else. Um, the other thing that I may put in is um, a yeast-free veggie bouillon cube. I'm going to do a little taste test and see if it needs a little bit more salt, possibly for my taste. And then we'll be waiting on the beans, and we will stuff our cabbage. See you in a couple minutes. So here we have it is our cassava vegetable and lentil stuffing. So we're going to take a second and we're going to stuff our cabbage. So here we go. We're going to be finishing up here and then we'll show you the last product once everything is cooked. Realize I need a videographer. <laughs> this is really difficult to kind of set up my iPad with all these different angles, but here we go. So I'm just going to hold this like this so you can see. And then we're gonna have a quarter of a cup of our stuffing and we're just gonna put it in and we're going to wrap it kind of, <laughs> there we go. There, kind of simple. And we're just gonna put this down for a second. We got some toothpicks here. So there we go. Put a toothpick in it, nice and wrapped. I didn't tuck the ends. Um, just because it's a little bit crunchy, but you can fold into the ends if you want to. You're gonna break your cabbage, but that's okay. And we're gonna set it down, and I'm gonna make probably about eight, 10, 12 of these in my pan, and then I'm gonna take this, my sauce, very plain, organic marinara sauce, and I'm gonna pour it on top once all of it's done like a lasagna, and I have my Go Veggie Parmesan cheese I'm gonna sprinkle on top, and then I'm going to put it in the oven at approximately 350 and I'm going to put it in uncovered and we're going to show you the finished product. See you in a few minutes. So I wasn't really sure if we'd get 8 or 12, but we totally got 12 of the cabbage rolls. So here they are ready for the tomato sauce. Just like lazy man pouring. <laughs> oh, just a little bit for everything. There we go. So eloquent. <laughs> totally video worthy. <laughs> oh. oh, we gotta laugh at life. Okay, and then we're going to do our shaking cheese. There we go. Because Really, we, I know we're Mediterranean. We, we are truly Italian at heart. You can add more if you want later, but we just want a little bit of dash on here in honor to our heritage. See you in a couple of minutes. So here we are, our finished cabbage rolls. Let me know how you like them and if you have any suggestions that you would like me to post. Thanks for watching.